Homework 33 starts off with solving a triangle with a law of sines. We use the law of sines in a couple different cases, but on these first one, if you have two angles and a side, angle, angle, side. The law of sines says if you take the sine of angle A over side A, it's equal to the sine of angle B over side B, which is equal to the sine of angle C over side C. And so in this case, it says consider the triangle ABC like the one below. Suppose that angle B is 25 degrees, angle C is 106 degrees, and side A is 7. <coughs> so first thing we're going to do is figure out what the measure of angle A is. Hopefully you know that all three angles in your triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we take 180 degrees, we subtract off our other two angles, 25 and 106. We're going to come up with how many degrees angle A is. So 180 minus 25 minus 106 gives me 49. So angle A is 49 degrees. And so that's going to be one of the things that you are going to enter in as part of your answer is what's the measure of angle A? 49 degrees. Now we can use the law of sines in order to find our other two sides. We have angle A and side A. So we can say the sine of 49 over 7 equals, and then I'm going to do B, so the sine of 25 over side B. We're going to solve this by cross multiplying, so doing it the long way, I would have B sine of 49 equals 7 sine of 25. I end up dividing by the sine of 49. So this is my calculation right here. These are in degrees, so make sure your calculator is in degree mode. We were in radians the other day, so make sure you just switch it back to degrees. Mode, mode and then you have the degree radians and gradients, so we want mode one, which is degrees, should see the little D up on your calculator to make sure you're in degrees. So I'm going to calculate what is seven sine of 25 divided by the sine of 49. Seven sine of 25 divided by the sine of 49 gives me 3.9198, so forth and so on. I want to round my answers to the nearest tenth, and so 3.9 would be my answer for side B. Then I have to find side C the same kind of way. I want to use the one that I didn't do any rounding on, so I'm still going to use the sine of 49 over 7. This time I'm going to use angle C, so I'm going to use the sine of 106 over C. So again, if I would go through the process of cross multiplying, I'm going to take the 7 times the sine of 106, I'm going to end up dividing by the sine of 49. If you need to, do it the long way and end up dividing, but just to save myself some space, I'm going to take a little shortcut there. So C is going to equal 7 times the sine of 106 divided by the sine of 49, and then I'm going to use my calculator. So 7 sine of 106 divided by sine of 49 gives me 8.915, again rounding off to the nearest tenth. C is going to be 8.9. And now I found angle A, side B, and side C. Number two then, if I look at my triangle, suppose that angle A is 115 degrees, angle C is 37 degrees, and side A is 11. Again, we're going to find B by taking 180 minus our 115 minus our 37. 180 minus 115 minus 37 gives us 28. So angle B is going to be 28 degrees. 
So looking at our law of sines then, we want an angle that has opposite my side measure. Again, this happens to be A because I have angle A and side A both. And so I'm going to use that one. <coughs> so I'm going to say the sine of angle A, which is 115, over side A, which is 11, equals the sine of 28 in order to find side B. Again, I would cross multiply to solve that. So <coughs> I'm going to take the 11 times the sine of 28. I'm going to end up dividing by the sine of 115, and that's going to give me my answer for B. So 11 sine of 28 divided by the sine of 115 gives me 5.698. I am rounding to the nearest tenth, so 5.7 is what's going to be the side length for B. <clears throat> C, same kind of thing. I'm going to use the one with the given information, the sine of 115 over 11. This time I'm going to use the sine of C, so the sine of 37 over C. Cross multiplying, I would get 11 times the sine of 37. I would end up dividing by the sine of 115. So 11 sine of 37 divided by the sine of 115 gives me 7.304, so rounding off to the nearest tenth, C is going to be 7.3. Number three, again we're using the law of signs. It says, consider the triangle like the one below. Suppose that angle A is 58, angle C is 38, and side C is 53. So again, to find angle B, we're just going to take 180 and subtract the 58 and the 38 that we already know. So 180 minus 58 minus 38 gives me 84. So we know that B is 84 degrees. <clears throat> now on this one, notice that we have angle C and side C. So that's going to be our starting ratio that we want to use. The sine of 38 over 53 is going to equal the sine of, and I'll just do A, so 58 over A. Again, we have to cross multiply, so 53 times the sine of 58, and we end up dividing by the sine of 38 to get our answer for A. So 53 sine of 58 divided by the sine of 38 gives me 73.005, rounding to the nearest tenth then, a is going to be 73.0. They will have you show it to the tenth spot, and so we do want to put the point zero just to specify that, yep, we knew it was supposed to be a point zero. Then we're going to do B, so we would still use the 38, sine of 38 over 53. That is going to equal the sine of B, which is 84 over B. 84 doesn't want to show up there because it says page 2. So, cross multiplying, we're going to have 53 times the sine of 84, and then we're going to end up dividing it by the sine of 38. So, 53 sine of 84 divided by the sine of 38 gives me 85.614, so 85.6 would be my answer for how long is side B. And now I found my missing information for my triangle. So law of sines, the sine of the angle over the opposite side equals the sine of my angle over the opposite side equals the sine of my angle over the opposite side.